Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Now I've recently reviewed both the Surface Laptop 4 and the Surface Pro 7 Plus, and I really love both of these machines. So tonight I want to put them head to head. I'm going to put timestamps down below in the description just in case you want to skip to some certain areas that you're interested in. But otherwise we're going to go through the actual design and the actual use of both these machines as well as the performance. Now before we start comparing them, I just want to briefly talk about the specs that we've got in both of these models. Now they are both the base models, but the base model of the Surface Pro 7 Plus comes with Tiger Lake i5, which is passively cooled, so no fan. It has 8GB of RAM and 128GB SSD. This has a 12.3 inch pixel sense display and costs £925 in the UK, and that does not include the pen or the type cover. So we're going to also include another £100 in this cost, taking it to just over £1,000 if we add a basic type cover, because in all honesty, if you're going to be using this as a laptop, you really do need that type cover. And on the right, we have the new Surface Laptop 4 Ryzen 5 base model. This has 8GB of RAM, 256GB of SSD, and a larger 13.5 inch pixel sense display, and costs £999, or $999. So looking at the size of these two devices, you can see that the Surface Laptop 4 with its larger screen is actually a bigger device, but not by a great deal. Putting them on top of each other, you can see that the Surface Laptop 4 is about 50mm deeper and 50mm wider, or two thirds of an inch for Imperial viewers. If I put them side by side on the desk, you can also see with regards to the actual height of the devices, now bear in mind I do have the actual type cover attached because you're mostly going to be using it with a type cover. But you can see that at the back, the Surface Laptop 4 is slightly taller than the Surface Pro 4 with a type cover. But because it's tapered, at the front of the laptops, the Surface Laptop 4 is actually slimmer than the Surface Pro 7 Plus. So we have a quick look at the weight. The Surface Pro 7 Plus first, with the type cover, as that's how you use it most likely. That comes in at 1 kilogram and 76 grams, or 2 pounds, 5.9 ounces. And now the Surface Laptop 4, that comes in at 1.26 kilograms or 2 pounds, 12.5 ounces. So you can see that the actual Surface Laptop 4 is very slightly heavier, there's not a lot in it. And to be fair, when you're picking them up, because of the weight distribution, it doesn't really feel a lot heavier than the Surface Pro 7 Plus. Now let's take a quick look at the ports. This is where it's an easy win for the Surface Pro 7 Plus over the Surface Laptop 4. Now both machines have the Surface Connect port where you can actually charge or use the Surface Connect dock. They've also both got a USB-C and a USB-3 port, plus they've both got a headset jack. But the Surface Pro 7 Plus also has a choice of either a micro SD card slot or you could choose to buy an LTE version. If you buy the LTE version, they use that as the same location as the micro SD card slot. So you need to choose one or the other. Also, being an actual tablet 2-in-1, on the top of the Surface Pro 7, you've got a power button and you've got the volume rocker switches. Right, so let's open them up and take a look inside. So, Surface Laptop 4 and the Surface Pro 7 Plus because it's not a standard laptop you obviously you need to put your kickstand out and we're in. Right so now we've got both of the machines open let's take a quick look around see the differences between them. We're going to start with the palm rest and the trackpad. Now we've got the Alcantara finish with the Surface Laptop 4 on the Surface Pro 7 Plus, I've got the most basic type cover. So this is just a fabric type feeling, but not the Alcantara. You can get the signature type Alcantara exactly the same as this if you prefer. It is a little bit more expensive, but that's the joy of the Surface Pro. You can just chop and change with the type covers. So let's look at the trackpads. You can see straight away that the Surface Laptop 4 has a much, much bigger, much more roomy trackpad to use. But the Surface Pro 7 Plus on the type cover, although it is much smaller, it does still feel great to use. Gestures work perfectly, two fingers tap to click, all those gestures work fine. It is just a little bit more restrictive being much smaller when you're using them both side by side. And then as we move up to the keyboards, they've both got the same keyboard layout. They're both great to type on. They're both backlit and the keys will obviously be sort of a matching color to the type of laptop you buy, whether the gray with the Alcantara or you can buy the metal finishes with the Surface laptop or with the Surface Pro 7 Plus, you've got plenty of different color options that you can choose to go with your actual laptop. When it comes to the actual typing experience with these laptops, again, you've got to give the nod to the Surface Laptop 4 here. There is a bit of play on the Surface Laptop 4's keyboard because this is the Alcantara. If that would bother you, then you need to spend a little bit more and get the actual full metal bodied version. There's no play on that one. But even though there's a little bit of play, it's nothing like the sort of the, the hollow sort of feeling and give that you've got on a type cover. Now this is still a good keyboard to type on, but if you are switching from one to the other, then it does feel nice to type on the Surface Laptop 4. 
Now looking at the screens, they've both got pixel sense displays that are touch sensitive and you can use the pen on both of these screens. If we look at the Surface Pro 7 Plus screen first, it's a 12.3 inch pixel sense with a resolution of 2736 by 1824, an odd resolution, but it's a three by two aspect ratio. And as we move across to the Surface Laptop 4, it's a 13.5 inch three by two with a resolution of 2256 by 1504. So although the screen is actually bigger than the Surface Pro 7 Plus, it's actually got a lower resolution. But in day-to-day -day use, if you're just using one or the other, both of these screens look absolutely brilliant. And in all honesty, I actually prefer the lower resolution on the Surface Laptop 4 because it's actually easier to drive and I prefer the actual larger screen size than I do on the Surface Laptop 7 Plus. So we're going to do a very quick speaker test on both of these laptops so you can hear how they sound. We're using our usual royalty-free music on YouTube and we're running them at both 40% on the speakers. We're going to start with the Surface Pro 7 Plus. Now the Surface Laptop 4. Now up to 60%. So there you have it. The Surface Laptop 4 sounds a lot louder and a bit clearer than the Surface Pro 7. And that's quite interesting, because obviously with the Surface laptop, I'm guessing it's got bigger speakers, but they've got to be underneath the actual Alcantara firing up through this by the looks, because there's no speaker grills. Whereas the Surface Pro 7 Plus, the speaker grills are firing directly at you from either side of the tablet. So you would think, although obviously the sound coming at you, it would probably have as good sound, but certainly the Surface laptop 4 seems to win that test. So as we move up to the webcams, both of these laptops have Windows Hello, which is my favorite form of like Windows authentication, just open them up and you just log straight in. They're both really accurate. And I use this so much, if I have to go back to a fingerprint reader or type in a password, it really does feel like a chore nowadays. This is a proper first world problem. As well as having Windows Hello, the Surface Pro 7 Plus has a rear camera and the webcam and microphones, and they sound like this. So this is the webcam and the microphone on the Surface Pro 7 Plus. And this is what the webcam and mics look and sound like on the Surface Laptop 4. I've done some test shots on the rear camera on the Surface Pro 7 Plus so you can see what they look like. Now when it comes to the battery life between these two devices, there really is no contest. With the Surface Pro 7 Plus, we would get between seven to eight hours of light use such as streaming music over Wi-Fi. Whereas the Surface Laptop 4 running the same light task was easily hitting between 10.5 and 11.5 hours. So quite an incredible amount of difference. Now with regards to chargers, both of these come with the standard 65 watt Microsoft chargers that they've been using for the Surface Pros and Surface Laptops for years. They connect magnetically through the Surface Connect port, that's really quite handy. But also because both of these got USB-C port, they can be charged with a USB-C charger and also USB-C power banks, which is really quite handy if you need a bit of extra power on the go. So looking at the performance of these two devices is very interesting. The Tiger Lake i5 Surface Pro 7 Plus is a passive device. That means there's no fan and therefore no fan noise. But despite being passive, the performance of this device is really good and it can maintain 30 watts flow for quite a period of time. So it doesn't feel like you're using a throttle passive device. The whole range of Surface laptops, on the other hand, they all have fans. Now they're not obnoxiously loud like a gaming laptop, but you will hear it if you're heavily utilizing the CPU or if you're gaming. So then the question is, which is better, Ryzen 5 or Tiger Lake? Well, this is more difficult than it actually sounds. Prior to Tiger Lake, when Ryzen dropped, it absolutely destroyed the Intel 10th gen CPUs. But now with Tiger Lake's far faster single core performance and the new XE graphics, it's a more difficult contest. So to break it down, for the single core performance, the Tiger Lake Surface Pro easily wins, making the machine feel a little snappier and apps loading a little bit quicker. But when it comes to multi-core performance, then the Ryzen takes the win with its six cores over Intel's four. And lastly, as we look at 3D performance, then this is another win for Intel with its Tiger Lake XE graphics, which is taking quite a lead over the dated Vega graphics. The benchmarks don't mean everything and both these machines are very capable and you can easily do a bit of light gaming or video editing or a little bit of uh, programming, say Unity or Blender on both of these devices and they both feel great. Being a two-in-one device, the Surface Pro 7 Plus is definitely the more versatile. 
The kickstand is brilliant and makes drawing notes effortless. And you can either rip the type cover off or swing it behind whilst you want to draw on the actual Surface Pro itself. You can also rip the keyboard off and dock it at a desk and it's really useful to have it as a secondary device under your screen. Lastly, the power button and the volume rocker is handy when you're not using the Surface Type Cover. With the Surface Laptop, although not as versatile, it provides a much better dedicated laptop than the Surface Pro 7 Plus, with much better lapability. If you've ever tried typing with the Surface Pro 7 on your lap, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, so to conclude, which model should you buy? Now, performance is definitely better on the Tiger Lake, so if performance is your driving factor, you may want to just get the Surface Pro 7 Plus. But you can also order the Surface Laptop 4 in Tiger Lake 2, but unfortunately this does cost quite a lot more. So let's just ignore performance for a second, especially as in day-to-day -day use, you probably won't really notice the difference between these two, unless you're editing in Premiere Pro or gaming quite regularly on this device. So more important than performance, do you want the premium laptop or the more versatile jack-of-all-trades Surface Pro 7 Plus? Now for me, as I use this device as a laptop, the Surface Plus is pretty much wasted on me, and I much prefer the larger screen, better speakers and typing experience on the Surface Laptop 4, plus the better battery life. Now my colleague Gary swears by his Surface Pro 7 Plus, which he uses heavily for Photoshop, art, light video editing, and a little bit of on-the-go development. So what are your thoughts on these two devices? Which would you choose? Please let us know in the comments down below. And I'd also be grateful if you could like and subscribe and hit the notification buttons because this helps us grow the channel and provide more content for you. And before I sign off, I just want to let you know that in the next coming week, we've got the G15 from Dell and the M15R5 arriving. So there's plenty more content coming too. So make sure you do hit that notification bell. And lastly, thank you for watching.